In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So, one of the great things about uh, our time in London was that we were staying with lifelong friends, uh, despite the fact that our kids had never met, they'd Skyped over the years, um, and uh, they were in uh, East London, uh, which has been uh, one of the most diverse parts of London, where, where, where a good bit of the uh, refugee resettlement and a, and a good bit of, uh, of immigrants have felt uh, comfortable uh, uh, setting up residence, and it's just a, uh, a neat part of the, uh, of the city. But we were there yesterday at exactly this time, sitting around uh, their kitchen table as we were getting ready to think about leaving, um, and... Uh, he is a professor at Cambridge, and he was saying, we have a sister uh, relationship uh, with the University of Virginia. Is Charlottesville nearby? Tell me about Charlottesville. And, um, and having, uh, between Anna and I collectively spending uh, uh, eight years there, uh, or 10 years there collectively, uh, we couldn't uh, uh, spend enough time talking enthusiastically about Charlottesville and how he absolutely needed to come. And we were only 70 miles down the road and, um, and how much we look forward to him being able to figure out a way to get here. And uh, we could return the favor of the incredible hospitality uh, they had shown us during our five days in London. Um, and then uh, from that, we went to, the, uh, uh, to Heathrow, to the airport. And I was thinking about what I was going to preach on uh, uh, today, as I knew I wouldn't get back till after 8 o'clock uh, at night, and, um, and it would be an early morning this morning, uh, and what would I preach about? And usually, if I go somewhere interesting, I like to try to incorporate that, and uh, usually when I'm on vacation, it's about the only time I get to do a really good bit of fiction reading, so, you know, how did the novel I was reading fit in, and I started trying to put all of these uh, pieces together um, with the gospel and the readings for today, uh, and then um, one of the other things that you should know is that... Um, uh, and this was not easy for me, is that uh, every time I turned on my phone, it seemed to charge me $50. You know, despite getting the international plan, I'm not sure what I bought, because every time I did anything, 50 more dollars would show up. You know, we, we went into Austria for like five minutes, and that was another $50 if I didn't. You know. um, so I didn't get to use my usual amount of data, so I wasn't following the news that closely, except to make sure there was uh, still a nation to return to, and that uh, things hadn't escalated any more rapidly with North Korea, uh, but I hadn't really followed much on the news. Uh, but when we landed last night in Dulles at around 8.30, I flip on my phone, and uh, you know, the freedom of being able to, to search the internet freely uh, uh, was somewhat overwhelming. Uh, so I, I went to CNN, and the very first, um, first article around the globe, around the globe, and it's worth noting, around the globe, because uh, the rest of the world is talking about what's going on in the United States quite a bit, was Charlottesville, a place dear to my heart, a place where I had lifelong memories, a place where I invited a good friend uh, from across the globe to come and visit, is the number one news story because of bigotry, hatred, and racism. And I'm sorry you're not going to get the rest of the triptych because that can't be ignored. That can't be glossed over. We have to figure out how do we deal with the issue of racism in America? How do we deal with the, uh, the, all of the hatred that we have towards our brothers and sisters? All of the things that uh, either we swept under the pew or that we assumed we were much farther ahead than we are in, in, in relating to, and whether it's uh, emerged uh, anew in the last couple of years or whether uh, we're just dealing with something we've never really, really solved or dealt with fully. It's right in front of our eyes and not just in front of our eyes, it's in front of the world's eyes. What happened? Why? So it required me to look afresh at the readings for today. So I looked at the first reading and I read it and I didn't think that it had a whole lot to do with global politics or race or any, but then I read it again. The story of Joseph and the coat of many colors. Now when you read the whole story you realize that Joseph uh, wasn't the easiest youngest brother to have around. He tattled on his older brothers, he shared uh, visions of how uh, eventually the older brothers would bow down to him. Uh, he didn't quite get it. Uh, and he probably would have done well not to wear that wonderful coat of many colors uh, around as often as he did. And his dad, if his dad uh, had, had taken a few parenting workshops, might not have given the son the coat of many colors. Uh, but all of that does not permit the brothers to stop looking at Joseph as 
firstly, squarely, their brother. And what happens is that becomes the lens of which they don't look at him first. They don't start with, this is my brother, despite da-da-da-da-da. They start seeing all of the other things between him and his identity as their beloved brother, as their flesh and blood. They start seeing his beautiful coat, his annoying habit of sharing stories about dreams, uh, the fact that he never seems to get as much work done because he's younger and he's always uh, dreaming, uh, the fact that he tattled on all of those things come before his core identity as a fellow brother. And we do that to one another. We do it across lines of race, whether we know it or not. We do it across lines of religion. And we do it across political lines. We put our differences ahead of our core identity as brothers and sisters. They were willing to kill their brother because of all the stuff they put between that core identity of him as their brother and all the things that bothered them. And they let resentment and anger and the feeling of of, of losing their share because of, uh, of Joseph ahead of loving him as their brother despite all of the other things. We have to figure out what we put between us and our brothers and sisters. It doesn't mean that we have to love everybody perfectly and evenly, but we start with that core identity. This is my brother or this is my sister. And we work through all the differences after that. And I think that that story teaches us quite a bit about that. I also started to think about another experience I had. Uh, We went to um, uh, one of the coolest things we went to. uh, There wasn't one of those regular uh, tourist sites. uh, When we were in London, we went to um, the studio where they filmed most of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, And it's outside of the tube line, uh, which we got pretty familiar with. But you had to go into the heart of the city and then uh, catch a... um, uh, a service that would take you out, uh, out about an hour outside of the city to, to where the studios were. So uh, we got on the train, um, and uh, we, we took the tube. We got all the way there, uh, and we get there, and uh, the gentleman that's supposed to meet us is there, and he uh, says, you're not on our list. I'm really sorry. Uh, and we said, well, you know, we showed him the ticket and all the other stuff. And so um, he said, well, you didn't finalize it. You didn't call a second time to confirm it. Uh, But he said, well, let me see what I can do. And he starts calling people, and he goes and he asks the other people that he was supposed to uh, pick up if they could rearrange and fit enough people in. And somehow uh, they get us all sort of crammed into this vehicle. Uh, And as uh, we're driving, I'm in the, the, somehow I got the front seat. I'm not sure why. Uh, But this gentleman starts talking, and he said, you know, I just feel like uh, people, when they come this far, should should have a positive experience. Uh, And I always feel like I treat people the way I would want to be treated. Uh, his name was uh, Muhammad, and he was from Bangladesh. And he said, you know, our, our, our holy scriptures have, uh, have in it that we should treat uh, our neighbor as ourselves. And he says, you know, and they're very clear that the neighbor is not necessarily our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters or our fellow brothers and sisters that think like us. Uh, but the scripture is pretty clear uh, that our brothers and sisters uh, are all those people, especially those that challenge us. And I said, that's Interesting. I didn't tell him what my job, my day job was, but I said our scriptures are, are similar. I said we have a uh, uh, Jesus tells us that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves, and the lawyer jumps in and says, "Yeah, but who's our neighbor?" Um, and he says, uh, "You know that Samaritan that you loathe, that that you think uh, absolutely uh, diminishes uh, your uh, your understanding of Judaism, that uh, that you think undercuts uh, your even the location of your holiest of holies. That's your neighbor." Our archbishop, our presiding bishop said uh, uh, during his, um, his celebration of new ministry when he was uh, 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 consecrated uh, as, as presiding bishop, uh, uh, he, he used this reading and he said uh, what he needs us to do uh, as part of the Episcopal Church, uh, if we are uh, to understand the story, we need to put ourselves uh, in all of the most vulnerable places. Uh, if we are a young black man, we need to put ourselves uh, uh, and understand this story uh, where the Samaritan is, uh, is the police officer we're scared to death of. If we're the police officer, it's the young black man that, that, that invokes fear in us. Uh, if we are uh, uh, a, a white Protestant, it's, uh, it's the uh, 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 Islamic person we don't understand. And whoever causes us the most fear, the most difficulty, is the person we put in the other side of that parable. Uh, And so both of our traditions do the exact same thing. Uh, 
Uh, and then he started talking about, he said, you know, people uh, read a lot that's in our holy scriptures. And he said, there are stuff in there that, uh, but, uh, but they talk about how we treat one another in times of war. And yes, uh, some of the, the language in there, uh, it's not part of our, our, our tradition. It's not part of uh, how we understand God. Uh, it's just part of how people operated during a particular time in their history uh, when they were under attack. And I said, well, we have a book called Joshua, which I would hate uh, for people to read uh, in as our, uh, as our whole holy corpus of scripture and we continued to talk and he said you know i was a bus driver when those double decker buses for 10 years uh and he said people would say the meanest things to me he said i'd be five minutes late um and they would of course make it 20 minutes late and they'd ask me why i was late uh and he uh, i would say I, well, I stopped by selfridges the department store to do some shopping for a while i'm sorry uh, i said you know i'm in the same traffic that everyone else is in i'm only late uh, because uh, red lights, traffic, and all the other things that everybody else is subject to. Uh, but then they'd say, well, why don't you go back to your, uh, where you came from? Uh, and he'd say, you know, I'd, uh, uh, at first he would just, it would soak in and he'd just be angry for days. And he found himself getting angrier and angrier. And he couldn't go back to Bangladesh uh, because he said the government was too unstable. Uh, and he was providing for his family in a way he couldn't there. Uh, but it just tore into him. And he said, you know, uh, finally I started the, to say, well, you know, I would love to go back and visit, but it's really expensive. So if you want to help me with my ticket, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but he said the more he was able uh, to just uh, add a little humor uh, and, and to take a deep breath and to find that inner peace, uh, the more he was able to, to, to deal with it. But, um, but the fact that he had to deal with it for so long. And he said, you know, and when the news comes, he said, do you remember when the Amman uh, threw himself on, 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 on top of the, uh, the person that, uh, that ran into uh, several people as they were leaving the mosque uh, and he tried to protect him to make sure that none of the people leaving the mosque uh, would attack the man for, for running into him? He said that story was forgotten five minutes after it aired. He said the story of any violence that's done seems to last uh, for months and months and months. And he said, you know, uh, most of us are just trying to figure out how uh, to live a peaceful life. Uh, but how do we cut through the ang anger? How do we cut through the difficulty, the divides uh, that exist in our country and around the globe? I think it starts with conversations. Uh, and I think it's not easy work. I look to the gospel for that. Uh, that gospel today is uh, a powerful one in that Peter follows Jesus. Peter says, let me walk on water. Let me see if I can do it. Uh, and he jumps in without thinking about it, and his eyes are locked in on Jesus. And as soon as he starts to walk, locked in on Jesus, he is walking on water. But then he starts to think about it. He's like, I'm walking on water, and look at the wind. Uh, the wind is raging. Uh, look at the fact that, uh, that I should be sinking. And all of a sudden, uh, he, starts to, he starts drowning, uh, and, and Jesus has to come in and, and, and pull him out. Uh, but when he's focused on Jesus... Uh, when he believes uh, in, in, in who is right in front of him, when his eye is on uh, Jesus, he's able to walk on water. I've only been back in town for 12 hours, so I don't know all the answers to, to how we address what's going on in our country. Uh, but I do know uh, it starts with putting our eyes squarely uh, on our Savior, who says we are all brothers and sisters, who says love your neighbor as yourself, um, who encourages us uh, to be people of reconciliation, people of love, uh, people that bind each other together, people that celebrate our differences, uh, that work uh, towards a better and more perfect kingdom uh, here on earth. Uh, so I encourage all of us uh, to take the difficult time to think about what we can do in our own lives uh, to bridge that gap, to, to, to build something we're proud of, uh, to be a, a beacon of light, uh, to be like those second and third uh, uh, verses of that hymn uh, we sang before we read that gospel, uh, to truly put the fact that we are talking about our brothers and sisters uh, before we put apart uh, the parts that separate us and the differences uh, between us. And I think then, uh, then we can walk on water. And then we can build up something beautiful. And then we can be a shining light for, for miles as far as the eye can see. And that's what I would like to, uh, to be part of, building that up. Amen.